Since 45 blowers claim two victories on trade, many people like me remain in doubt on the deal. Um, 45's trade deal with China last week opened up export opportunities for American farmers, not really, manufacturers and energy producers, and his trade pact with Canada and Mexico, approached Thursday by the Senate, could help restore some auto production, but not all. Yet perhaps more than anything, last week's twin breakthrough on trade provided a breather from two chaotic years of 45 blowing policy making involving threats, truces, and heavy U.S. tariffs imposed on friend and foe alike on a scale unseen since the 1930s when Roosevelt was when FDR was um, president. The uncertainty had been clouding the economy, causing businesses to delay investments until they knew for sure how the trade trade turmoil would come out. We've got trade peace, said Mary Lovely, an economist who studies. Um trade at Syracuse University, at least for now. But Lovely and other critics warned that the deal with China leaves unresolved most of the toughest and most complicated issues dividing the world's two biggest economies and that progress could unravel over time. They also cautioned that the new tr North American trade pact, though it might spur some job growth, will likely make American-built cars more expensive and less competitive globally. Whatever the outcome is, the squatters' approach to trademarks, um, a clear break with seven decades of U.S. policy that has favored ever freer, ever freer world commerce. Rather than seek to tear down trade barriers and pursue rules designed to benefit all countries, the administration unabashedly embraced an, an America First agenda, which 45 doesn't put America first, he puts himself first, and with terrorist threats and combative rhetoric, it sought to force concessions out of China, Mexico, and Canada altogether. Previous presidents would have said it's about a win-win it's about trade liberalization. It's about global, global, um, global growth. Said William Rents, a former U.S. trade official, now at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Forty-five would say, "No, it's not. It's about what's good for me." This is essentially, it might make it might it, it might make it right. We we're, um, he basically says we're we're big and more important, so we can push other countries around. No, you can't. That's not how it works. Free trade has long been a mutually accepted priority for the world's major in industrialized economies. Many trade experts say they, that they worry in the long run. What if as relentlessly competitional stance and eager embrace of tariffs could pose risks to both the U.S. and global economies? And even as tensions ease at least temporarily with, with China, the 45 blowing administration is, a, is ready in tariffs on their European Union over subsidies to the aviation giant Airbus and and France over a digital services tax that targets U.S. tech giants like Google and Amazon. Here's a, here's, here is a closer look at 45's recent record on trade. Senators voted 89 to 10 Thursday to approve 45's U.S.-Mexico-Canada um, um, trade agreement a month after the House had passed it 385 to 41. The so-called USMCA replaces the North America a North American Free Trade Agreement, which had eliminated most trade barriers among the United States, Canada, and Mexico. NAFTA, which took effect in 1994, triggered a surge in trade, econ in trade among the three countries, and it, and it created a regional manufacturing block to compete with East Asia and Europe, but 45 and other critics argued that NAFTA cost the United States jobs by encouraging factories to move south to capitalize on low-wage Mexican laborers, who were largely prevented from forming independent unions. 45's top trade negotiator, Robert Light Lightzier, crafted a replacement trade agreement that is, in, that is intended most of all to return some factory production to the United States, but not all. To qualify for USMCA's duty-free um, benefits, automakers must derive 75% of their production content from within North America, up from 62% under NAFTA. That means more auto content would have to be homegrown in higher wage North America, not imported more cheaply from China and elsewhere. At least 40% of vehicles would also have to originate in places where workers can earn at least 16 an hour. That would benefit the United States or Canada, not Mexico, where auto assembly workers are paid a fraction of a fraction of that amount. After sealing a deal with Canada and Mexico, Lightyear had to negotiate with Democrats who had taken control of the House in the 2018 midterm elections. He ended up drawing overwhelming bipartisan support by agreeing to Democratic demands. These included calls to strengthen language meant to ensure that Mexico adopts labor reforms that will encourage unions, but USMCA could produce negative side effects. The new content requirements will raise production costs, resulting in higher auto prices, reduced U.S. demand, lower auto exports, and more rapid substitution of machines for workers. Syracuse's lovely and Jeffrey shot of the Peterson Institute for International Economics included in the report last month. Um, after 18 months of trade, of trade um, combat, 
the United States and China agreed to an in internum truce on Wednesday. Under the under the so-called Phase 1 deal, 45 scrapped his plan to impose tariffs on $160 billion in Chinese imports, and he had ha and he had hel helved his import taxes on an additional $110 billion, where the administration still maintains tariffs on $360 billion in Chinese products, and Beijing has imposed retali retali retaliatory tariffs on U.S. exports. In return, China agreed to do more to protect intellectual property and to curb its practice of forcing foreign companies to hand over the trade secrets as the price of administration to the Chinese market. But the centerpieces of the deal was China's vow to pay to buy an extra $200 billion worth of U.S. manufacturing energy and farm exports this year and next. The mandated purchases are unusual, are unusual for modern trade agreements. Trade packs now usually set the rules for commerce but let consumers' demand sort out how, biz, how, how buys about who buys much of that. 45's deal is not about competing on price and quality anymore, Lovely said. We're using our market power to force purchases. Critics wonder whether China is really capable of meeting the targets. Under the deal, for instance, China is supposed to buy $40 billion in U.S. agricultural products a year. Avoid the ambitious goal, considering that it's never brought more than $26 billion a year and that during the trade war, it has directed some of its foreign purchasers to other exporting countries. And things could get nasty if the United States decides China isn't living up to its commitments. It's, unu it's an unusual move now. The two countries did not arrange to let any disputes go to a, a neutral arbitrator. Instead, they would try to work out their differences in a series of consultations. If they can't, the United States can impose tariffs and the deal could unravel. Perhaps most significantly, the Phase 1 deal did nothing about the U.S. key complaint that China uses illicit trade practices and its drive to surpass the United States in such an advanced technologies as robotics and quantum computing. Specifically, it didn't address Beijing's massive subsidies for its own tech companies. Um, these are issues that are expected to be taken up by, by uh, taken up in future trade talks, talks that aren't likely to go anywhere until after November's U.S. election when 45 is out of office.